Hey, this is Drew Baird from Moon Audio, and welcome back to Tech Tuesday. It's Thursday, so we're going to give our answers to what we brought up on Tuesday. And we're going to talk about a little more of what I didn't go over the last time because there was just too much information to cover. So first off, sample rate is much more important than bit depth, as long as the bit depth is reasonable. If we compare an arbitrary combination of bit depth and sample rate, and this most likely will never be recorded this way, but for the sake of argument, let's compare 16-bit 192K to 32-bit 96K. The 16-bit 192K audio file utilizing the 192K sample rate will sound better than the 96K file. Bit depth is a dynamic range and is granular. How many bits can we break into dynamic range slices, if you will? Now really, 16 bits is not a bad bit depth. It does not get enough credit in my opinion. 16 bits can give you 96 dB of dynamic range, and 20 bits will give you maybe 160 dB of dynamic range for the use in the recording process. This is a lot of range. Honestly, there's nothing wrong with a 1644.1 or 48K recording. I would say at least 50% of my library is this, and most sounds wonderful. Obviously, this can also depend on the recording process. The numbers are there to provide great sound, but ultimately it comes down to the recording. Sample rate is what you need to look at when we are talking about high resolution music. Sample rate is like a, photograph, a, a photograph or a snapshot in time looking at the frequency range. The higher the sample rate, the larger the frequency response you can capture. As you increase the sample rate, a less sharp filter rate is required to get rid of aliasing. Aliasing is effect that causes different signals to become indistinguishable or aliases to one another when sampled, basically digital distortion. The higher the frequency rate, the more relaxed filtering can be in the processing. You will notice some DACs come with a digital filter option you can use. A sharp filter slope will cause the sound to be more analytical, whereas a smooth filter will make the sound a little more relaxed. Thus, as a rule of thumb, I use smoother filters on higher sample rates and a sharper filter on lower sample rates. But experiment, there is no reason you can't do the opposite. Now, DSD is a one bit system and you can't directly relate it to PCM bit rate as the process of conversion is handled differently. PCM is multi-bit, DSD is single bit. DSD has a consistent number of bits, either on or off, and is very much like analog in nature. PCM sounds more digital. The one bit is running at a high speed. Single rate DSD runs at 64 times the speed of CD sample rates. And double DSD rate is 128 times the speed of CD sample rates. So you can't really correlate the two together and I can't really perfectly tell you that PCM or DSD sounds better. For my ears, in most cases, I tend to like the DSD sound, and people that like a more analog sound in nature may gravitate toward DSD. Now, some manufacturers in their DACs will do a conversion. They may convert DSD to PCM because that's the way they think it sounds best, or they may do the opposite, PCM to DSD, because those people think that it gives more of an analog flavored uh, digital to analog conversion. So there is no right or wrong. There's lots of arguments out there, but you know, at the end of the day, it's what your ears hear and what you enjoy to listen to. Hopefully I've enlightened a little bit about those, those different scenarios and those different definitions, et cetera, on, on file formats. Next week, I've got uh, here a TAC DAC and a word clock. We're gonna talk a little bit about word clocking and how that takes into account situations with PCM and DSD. So stay tuned, make sure to subscribe. Feel free to leave some questions below and we'll see you next Tuesday.